It is important to understand what is actually considered an in-ball and an out-ball. As discussed in one of the previous segments, we discussed that in order for a, the right for a spark to be gained, we must have all the balls after a touch stop as in-balls that were involved in the situation. This is the inner line of a court. It defines the inner court. Any part of this line is considered the court. Thus, if a ball is sitting anywhere on top of, that is, on top of the line, next to the line, but over or barely touching, the ball is considered an in-ball. That also means that the ball can be sitting physically in the outer field, but a small part of it is resting on the line. This ball is considered an in-ball. A ball can become an out-ball in one of many ways. One of the ways in which this can happen is by creating a single ball stroke which rolls a little bit too far than intended and it results in your own ball becoming an outfall. This can be very easy to do when you're doing incredibly nice and gentle shots, which are very close to the line and in some cases just go a little too far. Ball eights become an outfall. It's clearly crossed over the inner field line and has entered the outer field. One of the other ways a ball can become an outfall is as a result of a successful spark. This is achieved after a touch. If ball eight touches ball seven, we have created a successful touch because both balls have stopped as in balls after the touch. Picking up ball seven, setting it under my foot for a spark, and then sparking it out of the inner field results in the seven ball becoming an out ball. It is important to remember in relation to the out ball rule that creating a successful touch relies on both balls involved in the situation stopping as in balls. There are two ways in which the balls in this situation can stop as out balls, thus resulting in an unsuccessful touch and the player does not gain the right to spark in this situation. The first is ball eight hitting ball seven and ball seven becoming an out ball. Thus, one of the balls in the situation has exited the court and thus become an out ball. The right to spark is not gained in this situation. Similarly, if ball eight touches ball seven and becomes an out ball, that is, our own ball exits the court after a touch, it is not a successful touch and the right to spark is not gained. I'll demonstrate these situations now. The first one involves spark, uh, touching ball seven and ball seven becoming an out ball. We can see that ball seven has crossed the inner field line and thus is an out ball. We have no ball to spark as a result of this and our turn simply ends and we do not gain the right to spark. In a similar situation, if we are preparing to touch ball seven and in touching ball seven, our ball becomes an out ball. We are now considered an out ball and therefore we cannot gain the right to a spark as we did not complete a successful touch. When a ball becomes an out ball, it is placed 10 centimetres away from the inner field line in the outer field. This side of the court indicates the inner field, and this side indicates the outer field, and beyond that, the free zone. Ball eight is struck out of the inner field, the point at which ball eight crossed the inner field line. In this case, it crossed it here. We then take as a reference point, and we extend it vertically in this direction, creating a 90 degree angle. We then place the eight ball with the number facing inwards towards the field, the inner field that is, and we place it 10 centimetres away from the inner field line. In casual play, we just guesstimate this distance, but when playing in a tournament, referees will carry a special device to measure the 10 centimetres exactly. The last consideration in relation to out balls is that of tape interference. Tape interference is where the line tape, which is used to define the inner field, Interferes with, interferes with the path of the ball. This is unfortunately quite common, and as gate ball is not necessarily played on the same surface every single time, line tapes are used to quickly erect courts when needed. When the ball is interfered with by the tape, the rules do not protect us in any capacity from it becoming an out ball. So in many cases, the ball can scoot along the line and become an out ball when it was not intended, nor would it have happened if the line tape wasn't there.
When stroking an out ball into the inner field, it is important to know that it is a foul to make contact with any ball that is on the inner field. This can result in a foul, which is incredibly similar to touching the same ball twice foul. In this situation, ball eight was an out ball and it struck ball five, which was an in ball. This is a foul and the referee will indicate as such. The ramifications of this involve my ball becoming an out ball after the five ball is placed back where it was before the stroke. And my ball becomes an out ball at the closest boundary at which the foul occurred. An out ball, although not allowed to touch another ball on the inner field, which will result in a foul, is permitted to go through gates but the caveat with this is that the gates do not count and nor do you gain a continuous stroke. It's as if nothing happened in other words. So if ball eight is for gate three and I attempt to hit ball eight through gate three successfully, this gate does not count. The scoreboard is not changed and I have not gained the right to continuous play in the form of a continuous stroke, but there is no other penalty associated with this. There is a situation which is similar to this, which involves striking the goal pole. If you strike the goal pole as an out ball, nothing happens. The points do not count, but you are not penalized in any other way.